Hey, welcome back to the Pretty AF Podcast. I'm your host, Asley Maslow, and you probably noticed from that clip, this is our first male guest. The show was created primarily for women and is meant to promote other female entrepreneurs, but I had to have this guest on the show because he's all about building women up and does it through the perspective of a licensed clinical social worker with over 20 years of experience. The guest I'm referring to is Bruce Mumson. And in this episode, we chat about mentorship, positioning yourself as a leader, building confidence, defining your boundaries, and the importance of networking. Let's get into the show. I am an LCSW, which stands for Licensed Clinical Social Worker. And I've been with the state of Nevada getting close to 20 years. Uh, Before that, I worked in Kansas City. I worked in Missouri and on the Kansas, Kansas side as well. And... What I've done in my career, I've worked emergency rooms, I've worked inpatient in a hospital, I've worked outpatient, a lot of court work, a lot of testifying, you know, having to be subpoenaed to explain things, work with law enforcement, probation, and parole, and currently I'm doing a lot of outpatient work where I'm working with the courts, working with uh, law enforcement, and just how to work better with the mentally ill and things of that nature. So variety of career, variety of experiences, and for me, I need that transition. I, I can't do the same thing over and over mm-hmm. again. Right. So what made you want to get into what you're doing? Uh, good question. This was not my first choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest about that. What happened was when I was growing up, I really was looking at a career either in law enforcement or going to the military. Mm-hmm. And my mom was not cuckoo about either one. You know, She was not wild about either one. She wasn't really into that for me. I was also interested in doing something to do, let's say, hotel industry kind of work, Mm -hmm. uh, nightclubs, things of that nature, or just, you know, being with the public. I like being with the public, things of that nature. But I also want to get into entertainment, not as an entertainer, trust me, but more like behind the scenes, like a manager, a talent agent, things of that nature. Again, I like working with the public, like working with different people. And that really wasn't going to work out for religious reasons. So I had seen a movie, this goes back many, many years, with Danny Aiello, And he had played a chiropractor in this movie. And it was really, really kind of interesting. I thought, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So I had just gotten married, was about to get married. And there was a chiropractic school in Atlanta called Life uh, College to teach, you know, chiropractic studies. Mm -hmm. So I had taken all my prereqs, the sciences and the maths, blah, blah, blah. And then I realized, great career, wonderful thing to work with people, but these are not the hands of the chiropractor. I would have done (laughs) uh, damage forever if I would have done adjustments. So I realized this is not for me. So I was just thinking what else I want to do with myself. And I was able to segue to go to University of Georgia and get a master's in social work. And the rest was history. So Create AF is about giving back and being creative on the inside. Right, right. Um, So one of the reasons I wanted to go on the show was because of all the ways that you give back. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to talk a little bit about that and what you just want to give back. Absolutely. Giving back is huge for me. Uh, really that's kind of like the culmination of what I'm doing in my career now and what I was always looking to do even years before is to give back to other people in a variety of ways. Dealing with mental illness, it's so pervasive and things have changed so much in mental health in the last 20, 25 years. Things that I was in grad school had never even heard of Mm -hmm. that are now commonplace, like traumatic brain injury, for instance, Um, the rise of PTSD, the rise of trauma, the rise of fetal alcohol syndrome, the issue of the elderly having their own mental health issues, unheard of back then. So yeah. the field has changed dramatically since I was in grad school, and it continues to change even more with you know neurocognitive, you know biofeedback, all of these things, and what you had mentioned yourself about EMDR. Mm-hmm. So all changing. So for me to see somebody that has a let's say chronic mental illness, let's say schizophrenia. Um, and I'm able to get that person into a group home or get them to have some self-awareness about the importance of medication and lifestyle changes, mm-hmm. that they have some kind of semblance of a normal life is huge. The other flip side is working with people with trauma. Yeah. And there's so much of that out there. And to get people to go past that, and never, not to say it's you ever forget it because you don't, but conceptualize it. Like put it away like in your brain like a box. I always look at like pack it up, put those terrible memories away. You could take it out when you want to, but it's no longer like cluttering up your coconut, so to speak. And to see 
someone move on from that, from, you know, sexual abuse, physical abuse. When I say move on, but like just be able to cope better, mm -hmm. to have a happy adulthood, to have a career, to have family, to have a children, have a spouse, boyfriend, whatever. That's also huge. So that's really, really big for me also to see that kind of change in somebody that you had a contributing factor to that is huge. Yeah. So that's really, really big for me also. And it's interesting that I also do a lot of public speaking now where in a lot of training where I work with law enforcement or correction officers, the courts, um, just trying to help people understand who work with the mentally ill, how to work with them better and more efficiently. And so people who, you know, you're not even seeing anymore, like now have an impact on, you know, working with prisoners, working with the public, you know, working mm -hmm. with people in the courts. So when you get able to change how people look at people, that's huge for me. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I know you mentioned that you were doing some type of group instruction thing with women. Yes. And also just, you know, to piggyback on that is that my feeling also is everyone deserves a chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. And the older I've gotten, the more I've realized that not everyone gets that chance. Right. So if you're able to do that via coaching, via clinical work, via counseling, via lecturing, and give someone a chance to open up their thinking, mm -hmm. that's huge also. Yeah. I think that's a really big thing because I know a lot of people, they just never were taught that they can do certain things. They're always taught that they have a certain place in the world, maybe. Yeah, it's and, and, I'll, and I'll talk about that later, the idea of labels, that you get labeled mm -hmm. and you get stuck in that one path, in that one direction, and yet one lane on the highway, and it's insane to me. But yeah. you, you get into that mindset because you look a certain color, you grew up a certain way, you know, your family was this, your family was that, you grew up in this part of the country. Therefore, somehow you're not equal to what everyone else is striving for. Right. And being able to help people to shape that, like, what, what, why was I thinking that way? You know, because mm -hmm. I grew up in a home where things were dysfunctional as well. And you're thinking, like, this is all I'm going to be good for. Yeah. So to get somebody to go beyond that, break the barrier, so to speak, break that glass ceiling, that for me is immensely gratifying. Mm -hmm. So going back to the witness group, can you talk a little bit about what you're doing with that? Yeah, you know, it's really important that I realize for so many women, uh, the issue of self-confidence comes up. Mm -hmm. And you would think like, why would you think that way? Like you're, you know, on the outside, you are attractive, you're put together, you're bright, you're intelligent, you bring a lot to the table. Mm -hmm. Why would you feel that way? And then I realized so many of the people I've mentored, because uh, social work is like 80% female, 20% male. Mm -hmm. So... I've had so many women that, because for me, the big turn on is if you're bright. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm not into the white, black, brown, yellow, you know what I'm saying? But I am into the bright. <laughs> and looks are really irrelevant to me. It's like, are you bright? <laughs> That's a biggie. Yeah. So um, to see people that will say things like to me, like, you know, I, I'm afraid of public speaking. Okay, let's go. You're going to go, you're going to speak in front of 50 people. Uh, officer so to speak I never did it before Bruce I never did it before Bruce yeah and you're gonna suck <laughs> and I accept that and you need to right now as well and you watch them the first time they do something in public speaking and it's like my name is <laughs> Susan Smith <laughs> oh yes <laughs> that is my name um, you're gonna be horrible but that's how you grow and I'm going to be there as your wingman. So when I see things are going south, I'm there to put a joke in, put a quip, get you back off the ledge and realize you can get through this. And you can take your nails an hour and a half away from <laughs> the podium. But the second time, the third time, the fourth time, you start seeing the confidence build up. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, you know what? I'd like you to take on this assignment for me. I want you to handle writing this procedure. I want you to handle this part with the courts. I want you to handle this with the staff, like giving them the chance to grow. Mm -hmm. And I'm big into communication. So I'm always like, here are articles for you to read. Here are magazines for you to read. Here are books for you to read. And even in the techno age, it's still important to that, that reading ability to grow, to grow, to grow. Mm -hmm. So you're not just seeing things this way. You're seeing things from a big box theory, right. a big picture perspective. And it's interesting, I'll have people say to me, until I met you, I had no confidence in myself, particularly from women, I had no confidence, guys too, truthfully, but no confidence, no confidence, but you gave me that confidence, you introduced me to people, yeah. you said, I'm going to this site, 
come with you. I want to introduce you to the staff so they get to know you. Mm -hmm. And people will say, I wouldn't have had this promotion if it wasn't for you. Or even with salary negotiations, like, you know, I always tell my, my staff or my former staff, don't ever settle for the first salary. The first, because that's designed to keep you, if they can save 5000 that goes back into the company. You know, mm -hmm. they'll, set, they'll spend it on somebody else. So never go into like, oh, oh, I'll accept that offer. I think you can do better or I'm worth more. And every single time I've done that, I've told them to do that. I got an extra six thousand. I got an extra five thousand. I got an extra, you know, seven thousand because the confidence of being able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I find that for women, it's important because so many times you get the dysfunctional backgrounds where the negative stereotypes growing up, and you don't feel you're worth it. Mm -hmm. And I want women to feel you're worth it. Do you have any tips for, say, asking for more in your job? If, How to do that? If or? yeah, sure. Um, never walk in and just say be passive okay that, that's the first yeah. step and sometimes you're going to be in a situation there's a variety of things to look at first of all never accept the first salary offer never because that's an hr person's wet dream to go back and say <laughs> to the person she only settled for like 80 we would have given her 87 yeah. but she never said anything so we saved seven hey good job bruce yeah. so never do that mm -hmm. always talk about i think you can do better Here's what I'm worth. You wouldn't have brought me here if you didn't think I was capable. You've seen my actions. You've seen what my work performance is. I'm going, you know, I deserve more. Or if maybe maybe they're stuck with the salary, ask for an extra week of vacation. Mm -hmm. Ask for, you know, would you pay for conferences? I'd like to go to two or three to enhance my skills. You know, so never like just walk in there cold, but be prepared. I always say have a pre-game plan. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't think you're worth it, they're going to quickly realize you're not, and they're going to take advantage of you. Do you have any tips for how you can feel like you're worth it when you don't? Fake it till you make it, <laughs> <laughs> number one. Number two is surround yourself with confident people who have been through the wars. What people will say to me is I'll say to people, like, I'm old, and I, our tagline for Sunridge of Nevada is, I've lived it so you don't have to. <laughs> so... Every mistake that you can make out there in life, yeah. right here, baby. <laughs> I've made them all. <laughs> so if it's like if I would have known now, what I, you know now and then, we know I'm saying going to go back in time. Right. I would have done things very, very, very differently. Yeah. So my feeling is, why should you have to do that? Mm -hmm. You know. So in other words, like to me, instead of hitting the wall at 80 miles an hour, I'd rather you hit it at 40. Mm -hmm. You know, the car is not completely crumpled and you can yeah. walk away. You know. Right. But here are the things I've learned the hard way so you don't have to. So people are going to gravitate towards people that are giving them advice. They're saying, like, you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy is giving me things to be aware of. He's kind of telling me what I should say. It's almost like you're creating a primer for success. Right. So when I say, tell them about what you can bring to the table. If they need to, they can call me. Use me as a reference. Mm -hmm. You know, let's practice this. Yeah. You know, and the, it's amazing to me. Sometimes people have said, you know, I was sitting in the room and I was thinking about what you said, I was thinking about what you said. And I said, I think I'm worth more. Or can I get an extra week's vacation? Or what is the uh, potential to rise up into administration? Yeah. Or can I be on this committee? Can I take this chance? And you don't realize the power of words when they're helpful words, mm -hmm. not something stupid like, You'll never make it. You're a failure. Don't don't try more. Like that's crazy to me. But when you have that person that really understands that, I've been through this. I know what they're gonna say. I know how the interview is gonna work. Here's what I want you to focus on. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to put down in your letter. You know why you're worth it. What do you bring to the table? It works. So when looking for mentors, what do you look for in someone, and what do you suggest to be able to find? This is the money question. Okay. I loved it on your website that you push mentorship and how important. One of the questions you had said to me was, you know, before we get started was, hey, mentorship, mentorship has been huge for me in my own life. Yeah. You know, give us an idea. Talk to us about that. So here, if you pick up one thing from my conversation, it is get a mentor. Get a mentor. Yeah. Huge. I can't stress enough how important it is. And something that until recently, women were not really savvy to and were not really thinking along those lines. There wasn't, like there's the, there was expression, the old boys network. There never was the old women's network. Women don't like to worry about their age, right? Everyone's <laughs> always 27, right? Okay. But the young women's, old women's, you know, club. Yeah. 
And until about 10 years ago, women were kind of shut out of these things. And it made no sense to me. Like, you know, you knock, 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 and the door's not opening. And they finally realized we got to band together. Mm -hmm. And we got to start looking among ourselves and how to network with each other. Now, I have influenced a lot of people, male, female. I'm a little bit of a freak that way because I like, like I said, I look at bright. You got to be bright for me. Mm -hmm. But for many women who are trying to get ahead in careers like investment banking in Silicon Valley, they couldn't get in. They couldn't get in law firms because it was like push down, push down. But women are starting to finally realize if you want to access capital, you want to grow, you want to become wealthy or successful, network with your gender, start from there and get on an equal playing field and then you can go forward. Mm -hmm. So for us, um, you know, finally I'm seeing organization after organization pop up now specifically for women. You see this now around the country, you can join up groups. You know, you pay a hundred, two hundred dollars, like women only, women mm-hmm. only. Get together, women talking about self growth, how to get involved in the stock market, how to get involved in financial startups, how to mentor each other. You know, yeah. oh, I'm a, I'm a lawyer in this firm. Who's looking for a job? Or how do you get into the law firm? Like they, this was not even done till again, like about a decade ago. But now it's like growing by leaps and bounds because women are realizing, hey, if we can't get in one way, we'll go back door. We'll open up our own door. We'll make our own door. Yeah. So huge. Um, and feed off each other, network and feed off each other. Just do it. Get that mentor. And I'm seeing things like female startups. And I'm seeing things like incubator meetings now where women are p- pitching their companies to get funding, which, the, you know, and, you know, there's been an explosion on the market, in the stock market, where companies coming now that are feminine products you know, like underwear or, you know, essential things that a woman is, is, is focused on. And you know what? Great. And what would women saying initially? I would go to these meetings with these men, these venture capitalists, and like, mm-hmm. uh, I got to ask my wife what that's like. Like, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. And they were ignoring these huge opportunities that women were bringing to them to say, look, I know there's a market that's half the world is has what I have, you know? Yeah. And finally, they're like, you know what? Let's go to women startups, women venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. Money is flowing. And that's what is huge to see. So, you know, go in that direction and and get that person that could look out for you. Now, here's the thing. When I talk about mentorship, and that's huge for us, that comes up a lot in our videos, it's this. Here are some bullet points I'm going to go into a little bit more in detail. Number one, find a mentor that possesses leadership skills. And that's easier said than done. But you got to find somebody that walks into a room that commands attention, that people are drawn to. And I'm going to use a quote from a movie. It was called The American President. had Michael Douglas in it and Michael J. Fox. Rob Ryan directed it. Mm -hmm. And there's a quote in the movie. It goes like this. Michael J. Fox says, people want leadership. They're so thirsty for it. They'll crawl towards the desert, towards a mirage. And when they discover there's no water, they'll drink the sand. Mm -hmm. That's how much people crave leadership. So if you can find that person that has that, run. That's huge. Okay. Another thing is see and observe how many contacts the mentor has and go from there. Mentors know a lot of people. And if you say like, do you know Bruce? I know Bruce. Do you know Bruce? I I work with Bruce. You know, Bruce, oh, he's good people. Like, if you don't have a list of people that they know, like they can't say to you, I want you to meet this person. I want you to meet, like I just introduced a woman. Oh, here we go, female, right? (laughs) One of my former students, and there's a woman who has an agency, both women, incredibly bright, Mm -hmm. very, very sharp. I said, you know what? They need to meet. They're bright. They should connect. They should do synergy with these two. They're both cut from the same cloth. Mm -hmm. So one woman said, well, why don't we get together and have a threesome, go out to lunch? I said, you know what? You don't need me for lunch. (laughs) You two just get together and let the common denominator be, you know Bruce? I know Bruce. Boom. Mm -hmm. And work together. So, you know, what's the contact list? Someone that doesn't have anything to say to you, like, I don't know anyone in this industry or that industry, waste of time. (laughs) All right? You know, kiss of death. Find a mentor that reads a lot. That's Mm -hmm. huge also. Um, For me, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to use another quote. There was a Secretary of State, name was Jim Mathis, and he made a comment, and it's interesting because he wrote a book. 
he wrote a book with this guy named author named Bing West. It's called Call Sign Chaos. And I want to read the paragraph out loud. He goes, if you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate and you'll be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to sustain you. Reading is huge because for me, knowledge is power. Yes. And if I don't know something, I'm going to look it up online. I'm going to see if it's in a magazine article. I'm going to go to the library. I'm always interested in learning about new things. It's never yeah. just about mental health to me. It's like, how does everything relate to mental health? Mm -hmm. So changes in technology, changes in how people look at themselves, changes in religion, changes in social decision making. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by because all of these things filter down. Yeah. So if you don't have that knowledge, you're going to be lost. So people that are not well read, that are not on top of things, don't go to them. Yeah. All right. Uh, make sure the mentor is a good fit and a good match for your personality and style. What is it for me? I'm brutally honest. Mm -hmm. So if I say to you something, and I get the bright factor is huge for me. I got to see the light bulb flashing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if I don't see that, I get nervous. But if I see the intelligence is there, and you're eager and you want to move forward, I'm here to help. Read this. Go here, talk to this person, mm -hmm. apply here, come with me. I want you to meet these people. Yeah. So see if that person is a good fit and a good match for you because that is huge. When I say, going back a little bit deeper, the mentor that possesses leadership skills, what does leadership skills mean? Problem solving, mm -hmm. communication, trustworthiness, trustworthiness, flexibility, and responsibility. People who are leaders take on all of these roles. Even today, like using my, he hates to hear it, but one of my mentors is my agent, Rob, was, I called this morning, I said, you know, Rob, it's Nevada Day. <laughs> the library is not open, you know? Yeah. And he said, okay, come to the house. Like, mm -hmm. we'll shoot it here. And I was like, okay, you know, like, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. And I know I have the confidence in Rob that he's going to, he's responsible. He's going to get it done. He's yeah. going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And he feeds that off of me and that I know Bruce is going to be here. Like, I'm not worried. Yeah. You know, he's going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. At work, you get response. You take care of your chores. Yeah. Like, I always have a list. I write everything down. Like, I got to get this done, get this done. This, and that's how it works for me. Yeah. I get it done, cross it out, cross it out. Well, there's a problem. Hey, boss. Hey, Bruce, there's a problem. All right. What's the situation? Okay. What unit? What's it? I'll deal with it. I'll mm -hmm. find out the answer. People yeah. pick up on that. He gets things done and he makes decisions. And that's how your day-to-day your -day is gonna work. They're gonna look at you and say, did she get it done? Was the work in on time? Did you present well? You're not, if you don't have it, you're not gonna get the most out of that person. It's a lot of puff, a lot of talk, a lot of smoke. And every situation is gonna be different, but that's the thing that I want you to kind of look at. The contacts, 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 point two. If they don't know people, how can they push you in the right direction? You know, when I speak in college, like at UNLV, I'll speak to some of the classes there. I'll say, if you got any questions, call me. Here's my email address, my cell phone number. And I've had kids call me, you know, I'm like, they're going to go far. Yeah. They're not afraid to talk to me. You know, he knows people in, in this field and in that field and in that field. Find the mentor again that reads a lot. Just for myself, so everyone gives an idea about reading, how important it is. I, I get the newspaper. I know I'm a fossil and I, I know next decade there'll be no more newspapers. Uh, I'm probably the last generation that will read them. But I grew up reading newspapers coming from New York mm -hmm. and I still read Las Vegas Review Journal every day because there are sometimes there are things that pop up yeah. like you know all these articles I brought with me came from the newspaper that right. I thought were relevant mm -hmm. so you do pick up things that give you insight and awareness of what's going on also read magazines again everything's going online I get it next mm -hmm. generation will not be reading magazines I get it I get it I read Smithsonian Magazine gives me a lot of insight around the world I read Inc Business Magazine I read Wired those are, that's a technology magazine, talks about culture and the future and the internet. Yeah. I also read Entertainment Weekly. I like to know what's going on in pop culture. I may not be interested in like what's going on. Like I've seen like the same shows, like seven remakes. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I saw that one three remakes ago, you know, where they'll take a song and redo it the fourth time. Like right. I remember the second one was pretty good, you know, but it gives me an idea of what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. And there are times that Rob will say to me, hey, check this out. Well, I'll say, hey, check this out. Mm -hmm. We did a video on a girl, Alicia Cara. How? Mm -hmm. I read an article about her yeah. in, the, in the newspaper <laughs> about this girl who was found on the internet. We did a song of hers. 
you know, only because I heard about her, I said, this is a kind of interesting song. You learn from that, being yeah. aware. And I'm always pushing books. I give books to people all the time to read. To me, two biggies are Tipping Point by a guy named Malcolm Gladwell. He talks, he's a social like observer, I would say, how things shift. He's written about 10, 15 books. Very helpful in looking at things differently. And for social workers and mental health in general, I read, always recommend a book called Shot Through the Heart by a guy named Mikhail Gilmore, who mm -hmm. talks about this function going back a century on each side of his family tree. Again, awareness that you wouldn't have otherwise. Reading, reading, reading. And again, mentor, make sure it's a good fit and a good match. If it's not going to work, walk away quickly. If it's not going to help you, get out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at it from that angle. Now, how are three ways a mentor is going to help a mentee? That's mm -hmm. a big one also. Like, yeah. what are you going to get out of it? Main thing is you will be exposed to a level of thinking and insight you did not have before. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to understand things on a different level. Yeah. Because you don't have the age, you don't have the experience, fine. Mm -hmm. But my job is to make you, in a sense, battle-hardened so that you know what's out there. I've had someone, you know, people say to me all the time, because of what you gave me these articles, I was in a meeting for a promotion, and I brought this up. Everyone's like, whoa, how did you know about this? You know, how did you see the link? Well, Bruce told me, <laughs> read this article, be yeah. aware. So you're exposed to things on a different level that you didn't have before. A mentor, I look at it as like a charger mm -hmm. that you have that you plug into a wall. And that person is, you cannot, it, it does, it's not connecting your phone, but what it does is it gives you a burst on of energy, but of confidence. Okay. That mentor is saying, you can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of one person right now where she said, you know, I was, situation came up with a counseling session and, she, and the guy had said, well, I thought I was going to get Bruce. I didn't think I was going to get you because mm -hmm. he had done, you know, another family member and I was sitting in on it and I really liked what Bruce did. So, you know, I don't really feel comfortable with you. She said, I'm Bruce's student. He's taught me everything. Mm -hmm. I can help you. Right. And she blew it up. She did a great job. Yeah. But she said, I thought what you said to me always, I'm pushing you, I'm pushing you to take chances. Mm -hmm. And she said, once I started to speak to him, totally in five minutes, he was totally into what I was going with. Very powerful session. But I, she said, I was like floating on air after I left. I felt yeah. so good about myself. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have felt that way with anybody else. I would have been like, oh, you know, maybe you should wait till Bruce, you know, next week, blah, blah, yeah. blah. That's what I'm looking for. And a mentor is there, is someone that is there for you when you're trying to figure things out, as well as giving you confidence. I'm going to use that word a million times, confidence, confidence, confidence. Mm -hmm. So many times, you know, younger people or people who just starting in the field or even older people, they don't have that confidence. And yeah. my job, even when I'm working with clients, so many times it's like, I, I can't see myself ever getting out of this, this spiral of being a loser. Uh, I'm, I'm overweight. I can't make it. I have a crappy job. I'm a single mom. You know, I was traumatized. It's physical, sexual abuse. I've drunk to drugs and alcohol. I, I can't go anywhere. I, you know, I can't enjoy life. Life's just gray, you know? Yeah. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Just take it one step at a time. Like someone believes in me. Someone sees I have self worth, like they they get they making me empowered. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you got the right person looking out for you. Hey, real quick, I have to tell you, the opportunity to be one of the five ladies in the Bad Method this year ends on July thirtieth. After that, I'm not opening this program back up until next year, probably in February. Click the link in the show notes to apply. We'll work one-on-one -on -one together for 12 weeks and you'll become the branded, abundant babe you've always wanted to be. I can't wait to help you establish your personal brand online. Now back to the show. How do you find those? <laughs> Here's what you got to do. Um, what, what I want you to think about for those that are listening is this. Um, it's like a perfume, honestly. Confident people give off a scent that does leadership. Yeah. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use um, my agent slash producer slash director <laughs> um, and embarrass him, but he used to come with me when we used to do assessments. Mm -hmm. you know, he'd write up the treatment plan and go from there. And he would say to me, like, there were times he said my jaw fell open and I 
couldn't find the muscles to put it back. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe you said that. I couldn't believe you brought that up. And he said, I've been around hundreds of like therapists and doctors yeah. that wouldn't ever have said what you said. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to having confidence in myself. Right. And he's, that's when I knew I wanted like, you know, to get to know you better and work with you was mm -hmm. seeing you in action and saying things that no one else was going to say. Yeah. So when you're around people that like take the lead, you know, walk point, say what no one else wants to say, yeah. you know, think differently. Uh, he gave me a comment one time, Rob, and he said something like this guy had said to him something about, oh, you did he hear about this on a TED talk? Mm -hmm. He's like, man, Bruce talked to me about that five years ago. Yeah. Like the TED talk finally caught up to Bruce, <laughs> you know, not Bruce to the TED talk. Mm -hmm. So when you think like that, like, you know, like this is a person knows what he's talking about. Yeah. They get right to the heart of the matter. It's like a great athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on a team and you know someone can really shoot the ball really well or whatever they do, hockey, football, it's not really important. It's do they carry the team? Are yeah. they able to do it game after game after game? And that's what a good mentor is going to do. That's what leadership is going to be about. And let me say this also for everyone listening. Trust me, as you get older, you find out the vast majority of people do not have leadership skills. They may have titles after their name, MBA, uh, JD, MD, MPA. It's just a title. Yeah. They don't have it. They get, they're put in positions almost to fail because they don't have the skills to work with people. Yeah. But very, very few people have true leadership skills. They're just afraid. It's like the expression of sport, they don't want the ball. You know, mm -hmm. 10 seconds left, like someone got to shoot the ball. Someone got to take the, the shot, you know. Yeah. They don't want it. Yeah. They talk about it. They may wear a C as a captain. They're not captain material. Mm -hmm. Those people that call it like leadership lists, they don't have what it takes. Yeah. But it's really important. Be around confident people. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be confident if you hang around people that are like haters and doubters and skeptics. Yeah. Get away from those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, here we are, you know, because the less time, the older I get, I only, like, only have so many years left before I'm, I'm, I'm a fossil, you know. <laughs> and what I tell, I only want to be around positive people. Yeah. Like when I talk to Rob, it's never like, oh, we can't do this. This is not going to happen. It's like, yeah, we can make it happen. Yeah. We can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I look for in anybody. Like, are you goal-driven? Yeah, there's always going to be setbacks. There's always going to be hurdles to overcome. But are you committed to seeing it through? Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then why you want to be around those people? Right. Whether it's in your love life, your personal life, your work life, is that if you don't have somebody that's pushing you and really mm -hmm. seeing you as, you know, like, hey, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, hopefully, yeah. but I want to push them in the right direction. And there's trials and tribulations in any relationship. Things happen. Mm -hmm. Are they there for you? Yeah. You know, do they have that leadership skill to get you going? So I don't have time for, like, the haters, the complainers, the coulda, woulda, shoulders. Mm -hmm. I can't stand that. I had a dad like that. It was, his favorite expression was always, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And uh, 50 <laughs> years later, nothing ever got accomplished. Right. Nothing. That's, you know, you, that was like a dysfunctional, dysfunctional life, which drove my mom crazy. Yeah. was because he never changed. Never did any. It was always, I'll take care of it tomorrow. How about today? Today, today, no. you know, <laughs> now, <laughs> tomorrow. Well, when you think like that. There's always tomorrow, and you wake up one day and nothing changed. Yeah. Just throw out some names of people. I just want you to think about Look these people up online. Ethan Brown. Who's Ethan Brown? He created a company called Beyond Meat, mm -hmm. which is now worth $9 billion, and I was tracking for the last five years. Because he yeah. said, as an engineer, he said, there's something wrong with food production in America. Mm -hmm. We're relying on cows with methane and, and just the cost of agribusiness. It's hurting the planet, the, the CO2 emissions and all this that requires to make a pound of meat requires so much water. And he stuck, he was an engineer and he said, I think I can do better. Had trial after trial after trial, company now beyond meat. You're eating it now in fast food, by the way. Yeah. Plant protein, vegetable based. This is the future of, of food, really. It's really good too. Yeah, and it's really good. <laughs> and it's, it's a game changer. And Oh, this guy who was like, he was just he was looking at, he had curated like an, a massive energy plant as an engineer. And one of the people was like, there's something wrong here. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Another name. Ah, female, shocking. Whitney Wolf Hurd. She is the CEO of a company 
called Bumble, what is it? It's an online dating platform where women make the first choice. Mm-hmm. Why can't women do it? Yeah. Oh, well, she did. <laughs> She's had the confidence. Yeah, yeah and here we are. <laughs> Two million dollars later. Um, you know, Ted Howard, he created a thing called Democracy Collaborative, which was to work with inner city places that had lost a lot of businesses from factories closing to teach people who were low income how to have jobs. How to create self-sufficiency when when the in the mainstream work had failed, go into those areas and change how people look at work, and get nonprofits like hospital chains to put money into local cooperatives. He started it just a decade ago. Another guy, John Harriel, second call, the pair's former inmates for careers as electricians, carpenters, plumbers. Mm-hmm. What was he? Former prisoner. Oh, shocking! Came <laughs> out mentors people here let's go you can have a career you don't have, to have a job yeah. so leaders who make decision it starts to rub off on you because if you're in that inner circle mm-hmm. they start to give you they start throwing hey can you handle it asley can you take candle this to, you know for me mm-hmm. can you take charge of this can you walk point can you go down talk to the city planners can you go down can you work the numbers can you write how we're going to do this program can you be in charge of these six people can I have you come to this conference? I can't do everything. Can you do two speaking engagements? <sighs> <laughs> okay, but that's how it's done. Yeah. That's how, and you got to find those people that think like that. Um, learn to fail. If you don't fail, you'll never be successful. Mm-hmm. One of our first videos was on Kendrick Lamar, yeah. and I was so dumb, I wore a shirt that was patterned, okay? Mm-hmm. And we didn't think about it. And we, t- we throughout the video, there was a zigzag pattern. Oh. I thought people would be blinded watching the video. Like, what do you do, man? You know, mm-hmm. rule 101 on, on the internet. Don't wear a shirt that's patterned. Yeah. Uh, 27,000 views later, one of our biggest ones, we've gotten two comments out of the several hundred that we got was mm-hmm. about, hey, bro, next time change your shirt. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. But what do the people say? They were focused on the content. They didn't care about the shirt because the co- the content was interesting. Yeah. Now, if I would have blown, I would have sucked. It would have been like a lot more about the shirt, you yeah. know? Hey, yeah. fat boy, and, and your shirt sucks too, you know? But they wanted the content. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. You learn. You yeah. learn. Has every video been a monster for us? No. But we also learned to say, you know what? Who cares? Mm-hmm. Just crank them out. Put them out. So you learn from failure. You learn from taking a chance. I don't think it's going to work out the first time. That's a fantasy also. But you only learn from failure. And then if it happens, okay, great. How many times have I tried different things? Yeah, boom. Mm -hmm. Or the circular file. Thanks, Bruce. What a great idea. Yeah. Push it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. You're going to fail. There's expression in sports. I think it came from Wayne Gretzky, uh, former Hall of Famer in hockey. He says, you'll never score a goal if you don't take the shot. Mm -hmm. You can pass the puck around forever, but someone has to shoot the puck. Uh, Playing baseball, if you don't take the bat off your shoulders, the ball's not going to go anywhere. You have to do something. You have to take chances. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a great line that uh, Penn and Teller have. They said, it took us only 20 years to become an overnight success. And they said, we played fair after fair, after this show, after this show. You suck, you're too old, this is a stupid idea, this doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 20 years later, overnight success. <laughs> Gotta pay your dues. Yeah. So, you know, push, push, push. And when you figure out who the key players are, and you can figure that out pretty quickly, mm-hmm. you stick to them like glue. Because if they're gonna, they're gonna take you in, you're gonna become like an apprentice. Mm-hmm. And from that, you grow. Because that's when they think they start throwing things at your way. And do you, how do you handle pressure? That's another biggie. Uh, one woman I knew was meant for bigger and better things, and she's long gone, and she got a huge promotion, and she thanked me for it, was I had sent her to do something for me, yeah. and she went and did it. She had to go downtown for me. She came back, and she goes, what do you need? And she didn't even say that to me, actually. She just walked to a unit that needed help and mm-hmm. said, I'm here. Okay, what's going on? I'm, I got the next patient. Like, mm-hmm. bang, done. Yeah. She, she's a winner. Yeah. She's a winner. So if you see those people that have those things that make a good mentor, how do you approach them to mentor you? Another great question. Um, You know, the first thing is have confidence Mm -hmm. and start doing things 
that separates you from the other sloths and zombies that are in most offices? Right. What makes you different? Mm -hmm. Give an example. Like, what changed it for us? Like, we've told a million people, like, I stopped because they're like, I don't get it. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and there's that look of, like, <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what's the point? Yeah. Now, I really only talk to Rob or a few people about what we're doing. Like, obviously, I talk to Rob, but... Mm -hmm. Everyone else, like they just, it's like, yeah. they don't get it. Yeah. So we stop because they can't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things for us when we were starting out, and I said to Rob, I said, you know what? I'm going to answer any comment that comes in. Yeah. And that's been a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. I can't I'm tell you how many people have said that in the comments. Yeah. I can't believe you write back yeah. and that you write a lot. It's not like something like, love you, you know, <laughs> stay <Love> you. <laughs> strong, <laughs> LA, love you, LOL. <laughs> it's like you, you respond back. And if yeah. we respond back, you respond back. I just telling them, we just got a comment where someone said, you're the first person I ever wrote to. Mm -hmm. Like, cool, cool that you're like some kind of celebrity on YouTube that wrote back to me. I was stunned. Yeah. Another person said, is this really your, your email address? <laughs> like, he <laughs> thought we had some kind of quantifying thing. No. It was, yeah, I said, this is my email address. Yeah. Um, we did a video where it took off. It's for us, a big one. And someone put it on Reddit and said on the band's page. And someone said, hey, man, this guy writes back. Three people commented on it yeah. that he writes back. So it told us that there's synergy going on where people are like, they're picking up on it. Yeah. Um, he had sent me something where people had called in. And guy said, hey, I have this question. I called the guy. I said, because he, he, he said to me, like, I have this question about what you said from a book about this author. Mm -hmm. I said, look, man, it's going to take forever if I just text you back. Like, it's going to take too long. Yeah. Like, here's my number. Call me. The guy called me. <laughs> and he was a college student who was working a summer camp from Illinois, working in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And I called him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you called. Like, <laughs> yeah. But that has changed it for us. Mm -hmm. Those comments have made us different than the, the 10 million other people out there yeah. that are all the same. So that has been huge. So what makes you different than the other people out there? So here are things to separate yourself from someone because people notice everything about you. Yeah. They know who's the worker bee. They know who's the complainer. They know who's the unit lunatic, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> or the office wacko. Mm -hmm. Like you get your labels pretty quick. So here are things you can do. Separate yourself. Okay, huge. Mm -hmm. All right, be a team player. People like it when you say, I'll handle it. I'll take it. Yeah. One thing that's helped me in my career is I never say no. Like, I'm always like, I'll take the worst population. <laughs> Violent, <laughs> aggressive, sexually inappropriate. Right here, baby. <laughs> They live in a shooting gallery. <laughs> they live in the wrong, if it better not be the right side of the tracks. It got to be the wrong side of the tracks. Right here. Mm -hmm. People talk. Right. Like Bruce goes out and does it. Mm -hmm. He makes an effort. He puts a note in. He's involved. Yeah. He has something to talk about with this person. That people notice that. So be a team player. Um, don't be abused, of course. I mean, I hate when I hate when people get nailed. Like, you know, they, people put their work off on them. Oh, I'll just do it. I'll stay late. No, no, no. I, I've held, told people, get out of here. Go home. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to have a life outside of here. Yeah. But if you can be a team player on a certain level, do it. People notice it. I had a woman, like, I said, I need help. Can you write me up this program? Because you're better at it than I am. Mm -hmm. Like, also, you know, acknowledge skills. People do things better than I do. Yeah. I got a boss. Yeah. She writes it up. Like, great. How do you, I gave um, her, she got a promotion off of that. You know, I, I, I was appreciative. Yeah. How do you um, kind of have that line of being helpful and like wanting to say yes versus like now you're being taken advantage of? You, you know what? I always tell people, trust your spidey sense. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're getting nailed, if, it, if it's being inappropriate, you, you know it. Yeah. If it's something like, hey, I'd really appreciate if you if you join this committee, if you're involved with this project, I could use your help. Mm -hmm. It's not like excessive, like hour after hour, it blows up your weekend, no right. pay. That I would never do to somebody anyway myself. Yeah. So I'd be like, okay, during work hours, you know, take an hour or two. Well, meet with me because you're smarter than me. I could use your help. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 people pick up quickly if it's not 
done, you know, to be nasty, would yeah. have, you know, passed your work on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if you do have that, go to somebody and say, hey, I'm, I'm being taken advantage of. Right. I get that a lot. People say, like, she's giving me my work to me. And I say, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. If there's a problem, come to me. I'll back you. Yeah. I don't want you being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. But if there's a situation where you can get something out of it, like going on a committee, here's an example. When you're on a committee, you're going to meet new people that are not going to be from your department. Yeah. So they become allies. They become friends. Oh, how you doing, Asley? Hey, that was a really good suggestion. Thanks for working on that proposal to improve things for the patients. You did a really good job. Guess what? They talk about you behind your back. Yeah. I met this woman. She's very helpful, very friendly. She did a great job explaining this thing now. We're going to roll this out. Oh, what's her name? Oh. You know, there's a great line from The Simpsons where at one time they're looking at Homer acting like a doofus, like he always does. Uh -huh. And Mr. Burton says, who's that slack-jawed yokel? <laughs> like, and, you know, and the assistant Smithers goes, that's one of your zombies, like in Sector 7, you know, level oh. 3. You know, yeah. he's useless. I thought so. You know, fire him. We'll set the dogs on him. You know, like, yeah. he's useless. So people know. Mm -hmm. But when you have that committee, that's a huge way to get noticed. Avoid, if you can, office gossip like the plague. Like, she's sleeping with him. He takes a long lunch. She lives. She leaves early. Everyone knows. Yeah. Everyone knows that stuff. Mm -hmm. But don't get sucked into it. Mm -hmm. Because I want to know that you... I get it. Let me deal with it if I'm the supervisor. But people know, and they'll be dealt with. Yeah. It, they're always dealt with in the end. Just yeah. focus on your work and try and stay out of the gossip mm -hmm. mill. And I always tell new hires, less is more. Keep your personal life as much as possible to yourself. Because mm -hmm. whatever you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> so just say they're going to get the hit with it. Because always people are interested in gossip. Like, mm -hmm. So you have a personal life, you have a boyfriend, you have a husband, you have children. Yeah, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm married. Yeah, I'm seeing someone. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. whatever you share will be used against you. <laughs> and <laughs> don't. Um, another thing is that um, take classes, improve your knowledge of a subject. Again, like I was talking about earlier, you know, 25 years ago, we didn't know anything about traumatic brain injuries, fetal alcohol syndrome, PTSD, trauma, um, physical and sexual abuse, how pervasive it was. Okay, I'm going to go to the class. I'm going to go online. I want to read about this. So you become the expert. So when you talk, you're talking from confidence. So always broaden your knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Even when, you know, what we do here, I'm always, look, I, I look at videos now differently. Yeah. I look to see, like, did they draw the person in? Is there other people who are doing mental health stuff similar to ours? How did they relate to their audience? What are their comments? What could I learn from? I even, in some of the videos, I will take comments from fans mm -hmm. and I'll incorporate them in the video. Like, so-and-so said, those are really, really good points. I, you know, I give credit. Yeah. But like, yeah, because I'm learning. I'm, if I watch a film now, I'm looking at how was the film put together? Mm -hmm. You know, was it choppy? Was it clear? You know, you learn. you got to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, volunteer. Let's say there's new people at job. You're there for three years. I'll take them under my wing. I'll show them the ropes. Yeah. Okay, you're new. Follow me. Well, here's a primer how to do your job better. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to volunteer on a project. Yeah. It could be something outside of work. We're going to clean up a playground. Okay, well, what, what's going to happen? Other people from other departments are going to see you and say, what's your name? Where are you from? Oh, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet other people. Oh, you helped clean up a playground on Saturday mornings for the last six weeks. You and 15 other volunteers. Click, click, company newsletter. Yeah. Oh, she's not one of the sloths in, <laughs> you know, in the department. She actually did something. Yeah. And you get to know other people on a different level. You know, you're not worrying about accounting or the IT. You know, there's a, there's a shared mission there. Yeah. Works. Um, join organizations, like things outside your comfort zone, but network, network, network. These women now are joining one organization after the other. Yeah. Women that are into tech, women that are into law, women that are into corrections, like mm -hmm. network. And then that's just be women only, because that's dismissive to a certain extent, but join national organizations, join yeah. regional organizations. You make contacts. Knowledge is power. Contacts are power. Um, get out from behind that desk. Huge. Because <laughs> ain't no one going to know you mm -hmm. if you sit behind the desk your whole life. Right. Unless you get a boss like me, which is 
very, very unusual that I found out. Yeah. Um, you got to promote yourself. Self-promotion is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say how many times I've gone to situations where I'm coming in completely cold. It's like, what my line is, oh, how are you doing? My name is Bruce Muffson. How can I help you? Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> Bruce Muffson, LCSW. Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? How can I help you? Here's how I can help you. And you think like it doesn't make a difference? It does. Mm -hmm. Just doing that alone, going up, being aggressive. I get the texting. I get the social media. I get it. I get it. I get it. But be aggressive. You know, show an interest. Come across. Hi, how can I help you? I'd like to meet you. I've had things just explode only because I was aggressive. Even when I walk into a house, you know, for the first time, you know, I'm here. To, uh, hi, I'm the in-home therapist. Hi, I'm Bruce Nelson. How can I meet you? Mm -hmm. And once you get past people's issues with racism, with skin color, or background, or ethnicity, it's like, guy's real. He came to my house. Yeah. You know, he paid a home visit. Mm -hmm. You know, he showed me respect, but he walked in with confidence. Once I got past all the, you know, the stereotypes, I could be cold with this guy. I could be honest with this guy. Yeah. And then things happen. Mm -hmm. Successful people are always, always out there. Yeah. Constantly. We did it, you know, that way with our YouTube channel. You know, anyone from our, my field get it? L O L. <laughs> No one still does. And you know what? I'm happy. Yeah. We have the field all to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm grateful. And this got us here. Yeah. You know, if it would have been like, you know, oh, Bruce Muffs and LCSW, he does therapy. Like, okay, like, who cares? Mm -hmm. We're having this interview because we made a splash yeah. that caused you to look at our stuff. And you could have said, like, forget it. You know, like, not going to happen, you know, yeah. next year we'll get back to you, you know, <laughs> circular file and maybe the shredder, you know, but because you saw what we had done, mm -hmm. you said there's something here. This is a person worth interviewing. Mm -hmm. And that only comes about from doing things outside the box, yeah. being different, willing to look at change and how people communicate. How I'm doing now counseling is going to change dramatically in five more years because yeah. I want to get away from the one to one. Our goal is to do one to 10,000. And I see that is more and more doable and more and more likely the more videos we make, the more interviews that we have. Like, yeah, because we've gotten comments now from every continent except Antarctica, which we have to work on. I think the seals and the penguins have not really been you know, <laughs> forthcoming. But we've gotten comments from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, all over the country. Because, again, people are seeing what we're doing. And that yeah. would never have happened. I could have worked... 50 hours, 60 hours a week, every hour, another person. And we still never gotten the penetration that we've gotten, even on this level. Mm -hmm. So that's how you have to think in going forward. Four years ago, we started with one video. Now we're up to 100. And we started out with no one watching it. Now we've had, I think, about 240,000 views. Mm -hmm. And even more important, thousands of comments mm -hmm. that I've answered literally every one of them, even if they're nasty. We got a couple. Um, you look like George Costanza, you know, tell Newman, you know, to stop bothering you, uh, a couple anti-Semitic ones. I'm like, if you care enough to leave a comment, yeah. that video did something. Mm -hmm. I'm down. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a compliment in its own way. Yes. Answer every one of them. Is that, do you have any other tips on kind of growing on YouTube? Um, well, for us, answering the comments have been huge. I didn't realize how many people were going to pick up on that. And we've gotten like about a two, three dozen comments specifically about thank you for writing back. No one writes back. I can't believe you were real about writing back. Yeah. Um, I can't believe you expressed your thoughts in writing back. You said you were going to write back. You did write back. We even, I've even done things I'm say, we're saying to people now, like, tell us why you liked that band. Like, it was about, you know, seeing them in live was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And people wrote in. Yeah. I saw them live, and here's why it was so amazing. You know, why did you like this artist? Because he spoke to me on a different level. He made me feel good about myself when my life was really dark and gloomy. But he gave me perspective about himself that affected me. Yeah. We realize when you want to get stuff out of people, mm -hmm. they respond. Back to um, being a leader, how do you recommend that someone positions themselves as a leader? Key thing is, is go into a situation and learn to listen. And do I doing that is when you go to your for an office meeting, let's say 75 and you show up, yeah. listen who talks. Ask people around you 
wow, like who's that guy or who's that woman? And then watch who makes the decisions. That's another thing too. I've learned like, shut up. <laughs> like no one needs to hear me talk, you know? And I do even in counseling, I have to doing thousands of people, assessing, interviewing, talking, doing therapy. I've learned to shut up. Like I don't have to like dominate the conversation. That's something that a lot of times new therapists get panicky when there's like there's a silence. You know, and I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to say, like, like you okay? Like, how's it going? Like, I don't have to have everything, like, oh, we met for 15 minutes and was constant back and forth. I don't have to do that. I can look at your body language. I can see how you're feeling. I can look at your face. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with silence. But I've also learned to shut up and listen to what's being said and picking out key points, key lines. Like, in my head... Like, it's like if I had a wall here and it was just filled with a conversation I'm listening to, yeah. like for me, like it lights up like the key lines mm -hmm. and I leave with like, that's what she was trying to say. Yeah. That's how she was trying to come across. Eddie Griffin, the comedian, mm -hmm. he had this comment which I thought was interesting and I knew what he was talking about. I got it. He says that before he does concerts, he sits in his bed and he looks up and he imagines how the set's going to go. Mm -hmm. And he starts to play with his fingers like he'll go like... Okay, this joke is not good with that joke. I got to like save it. Like, okay, put this in here. Let's bridge this joke to that joke five minutes later because it's going to flow. But it, yeah. I like that flow, but that fifth joke is too much. That can go for another show. It's not a, got a good topic. Where, what's trending? And he'll focus on that. And I thought, I get it. That's what I do. Yeah. You know, I learned to listen and I learned to think like, how am I going to present? What am I going to say? Mm -hmm. So I've learned to listen Pick out the pieces, and then it's like, let's go. I got it. How do you recommend coping with work-life balance? No balance problem. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Okay. Um, I got the question, and I wanted to share this. And, and, uh, and I've learned also to go to people that know more than me. Um, stress is huge. Yeah. Huge, huge. People are finally picking up on stress as an issue. Um even my own personal life, you know, I could look and say I'm stressed out of my mind, but like, what can I do to be more effective and not like, uh, you know, yeah. like that. So here, I want to share a couple of things and I want to read something from this article and it was called How to Reduce Stress and Prevent Sickness. Okay, Dr. Rangan Chatter Chatterjee had a patient with type 2 diabetes, which has been soaring in America, struggling to lower his blood sugar levels despite following an intense diet and exercise program. Chatterjee, an author, television host, and influential British doctor, believed the role of stress in chronic disease is far too often overlooked. Uh, shocking. He estimates that 80% of the problems that he sees, high blood pressure, insomnia, depression, metabolic disease, and weight gain, are in some ways related to stress. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. A lot of people are oblivious to the effects of stress, the doctor said. Okay. Growing body of research, persistently high levels of social and emotional stress, high pressure job, divorce, financial worries, strained relationships. Oh, dampens your immune system, yeah. provide promote inflammation, heart disease, and premature aging. Okay, he has a book naturally. He's big in Brit, huge in Britain. You know, he has a show. People follow him. He's he's big in Britain, but he goes common sense. Simple breathing exercises, calming uh, morning routine, significant lifestyle changes. For instance, optimizing sleep. Okay, 60 million Americans do not sleep well in this country. every night. 60 million Americans, and yes, I am one of them. Um, I get it. I, w I go to bed tired. I wake up tired. Yeah. There's so much going on in my head. Like I wake up now, and I. When I was a kid, my mom was like 50, and she'd tell me, oh, Bruce, I, I can't sleep at night. I looked at the clock. It was 2 o'clock. It was 4 o'clock. I got up at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I used to think, like, that's old people. <laughs> like, oh, man, poor mom. <laughs> I went to bed at 8, and I woke up at 8, you know? Like, I didn't even go to the bathroom, you know? <laughs> like, it just happens to old people. Now I'm 56. I know what she's talking about. Like, I will wake up now, and it's because I know what's happening. I'm not rested. So I go to bed tired, I wake up tired. And here I'm supposed to be the expert and know this stuff. And <laughs> oh, I suffer too, America. Okay. So 
cutting back on smartphone and social media use, that is huge. Cut back on that. that everyone is saying that now. Yeah. And fostering friendships and purpose to build resiliency. I mean, you have to have a, a lifestyle. You can't, everything just can't be this. And have like anonymous friends where you know I have, I have fifteen hundred friends online. You know I never seen them, but we're friends. You know it's not realistic. It doesn't really help you develop a real relationship. Yeah. So you also said that you know sleep, movement, relaxation. He has wrote a book called Feel Better, Live More. Now here's what he said it was interesting to me of the article that really rang home was he said they'll be motivated for one or two weeks. It turned out that their sugar alcohol consumption was their way of coping with all the stress in their lives. Unless we tackled the stress, they were always going to revert back to what they were doing. I was at a conference a couple of years ago and someone said, is anyone here doing anything with their people like hard physical exercise? I didn't want to even raise my hand because he was like, it looked like a big deal to him. I learned this a long time ago with my clients. If they can get out of the house, we go, we walk. Mm-hmm. If we can play a sport, um, I've, I've played basketball with kids. I played, you know, just throwing stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. But like, yeah. we're doing it. At the very least, we're going to go walking. We're going to do something. Why? Because walking has shown to have massive health benefits. Mm-hmm. Get you out of that house, and we can. I can easily talk to you while we walk, yeah. while we play something. But physical exercise is huge, and it has so many positive benefits for the body. So mental illness, what happens? depression you don't get out of bed that's the worst thing you can do for yourself you got to get that physicality going Mm -hmm. so when he said that it makes total sense to me and i saw this years and years ago why do people why is obesity soaring in america because people are just like they're not getting out they're not getting out like sitting in front of the computer we're just gorging themselves on junk food um you know and i was guilty of that too till about four years ago i used to Oh, I had to cope. I'm very stressed, very stressed, Bruce. So <laughs> on the way to work, I'd have a big gulp. Uh, in the afternoon, I needed to pick me up. Got a little yeah. nappy time. So <laughs> I need another big gulp. And on the way home after seeing patients, I'd have another big gulp so I can get my way back home. Mm-hmm. I realized I was drinking like 10 to 12 cans of soda a day. And I was addicted to Dr. Pepper. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Pepper and lime, lemon, hey, baby, right here. You yeah. know, where any kind of Diet Coke not healthy you know gave all that stuff up all that process stuff you know away 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 as a factor i'm stressed but this is not the way to do it you're being self-destructive to yourself yeah. better off if i'm talking to you on the phone i used to sit in my car now i'll walk around the neighborhood by the time i'm done with you i'm gonna walk two miles lowered my bp lowered my hypertension i'm gonna sleep better yeah. there's a factor like use it you know common sense wise there's another thing too this is big also, vast amounts of time on smartphones. His book says that studies have linked constant exposure, social media, depression, especially adolescents and adults. What is the number one reason why young people commit suicide today? Number one reason, being having their social media, their phone taken away from them, losing their electronic devices. Really? Number one reason, yeah. Oh. I thought it was bullying. I was wrong. Yeah, person, right. yeah person said, no, 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 no having their, their electronic devices taken away. That's how dependent we've become. And the people are saying that even when you want to go to bed, which is a huge mistake also, it's like, okay, let me just check my email. Let me just check my phone, scroll, scroll, you know? And then, okay, your, your brain needs like a good half an hour to 45 minutes to relax from that onslaught because it affects your brain chemistry yeah. before you can really go to bed. So you should do this like a good hour before, like just... Tone it down, power it off, put the devices away, and give your brain a chance, like in a sense, to heal, yeah. in a sense, to wind down. So the, he gives examples as a thing called a three, four, five breath. You know, take in for three seconds, hold for four, expel out of five, like just chilling out. Yeah. And then finally, he says, if you're staring at a screen all day, uh, that's me. <laughs> Take a break. Walk around the office. Walk around the building. Take a 15-minute break. First of all, save your eyes, yeah. um, number one, because the glare is just – vast majority of people are sitting in the wrong way in front of their screen. That's been shown also. So get away from that. Take a break. Take a break. Um, just take a walk. Huge. And finally, do at least one activity that gives you pleasure. So that means if going home, read a chapter of a book that you enjoy. Yeah. Spend time with your kids. Have a cup of tea. Just do some meditation. Do something that can help you 
de-stress. Mm -hmm. That is critical. Yeah. And if you do that, you know, making you more resilient is makes it more likely you're going to be able to handle when things go really stressful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I talk to Rob, I'm like, like I don't even say like what the day is like, because it's always crazy. Like, yeah. and I've learned <laughs> to accept that. You know, um, every day is crazy. It's not like. Oh, what am I going to do today? I got everything done. I'm, I'm okay. You know, like, no, it's like, you know, hit the ground running and go to bed, hit the ground running. That's not healthy long term, but the day is stressful. But I can't come in here and bark at him. Right. You know, I can't bark at my patients. I can't bark at my staff. I got to yeah. take it down. I think that's kind of part of being a good leader, too, is not is showing up like that and not trying to crazy even though it's oh it's huge i've seen so many people like lose it and take their personal life in with them and i've had crazy yeah. everyone's had crazy things happen to them everyone could say that but i can't bring that to you right. that's not fair to you you're looking to me for leadership um you're looking to me to be humble good leader is humble you don't like take the credit i'm always first if it's like hey asley had the idea boss that was asley's idea you know like smarter than me thanks asley like well, really, Asley helped, but really it was my work, you know, in a private. And I, and I know people that do that, you know, yeah. but I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. You had the idea. I'm giving you the credit. Mm -hmm. You know, we did the presentation. She blew it up. She was amazing. Not like when you're not there, like, yeah, she was okay. I don't know if I'd use her again, yeah. you know. But, and that's, you know, but so many people do that because they're so massively insecure. Right. Good leaders are secure. Mm -hmm. They're secure in themselves. And they're humble. They're, you know, as I got other articles, I'm sure we're, we're way over, you know. <laughs> <A little>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get going. Um, Rob wasn't wrong. You know, he could talk for hours. Um, but they're humble. They told Neil Armstrong walking on the moon how he looked at himself like, I'm grateful, you know, for America. Like to, to be the part of this. And everyone, it's not me. It's the thousands of people that made this moonshot happen mm -hmm. you're humble is there any other tips or anything you want to say technology has leveled the playing field no doubt about it um we could not have done this 10 years ago this conversation right. wouldn't have happened yeah. we couldn't have done the youtube 10 years ago it's infancy new careers are exploding in multiple areas and jump on them and have a career and not a job that's what i push for my people don't have a job have a career Okay, but you got to take chances and you got to be aggressive. For you said, like, you know, you say, I love your motto, love yourself inside and out. Mm -hmm. And believe it. You know, everyone that's listening, believe that concept. We all have unique strengths. We all have unique things that make us, in a sense, unique. Yeah. Okay, develop them and learn to trust them and grow confidence in them. Mm -hmm. I always go back to the, to the spidey sense. If it feels right, go for it in all areas of your life. And if it's not, and don't then don't push it. Mm -hmm. um, stay away from labels. Like I'm, I'm so past like white, black, brown, yellow, skinny, tall, short. Where you're from? How you speak? What school? Um, color, religion. It's like you, you make me cuckoo with the labels. Okay, yeah. get away from that. Mm -hmm. Just see the person what they are. Explore yourself. Yeah. Only be with positive people. Ignore the haters because there's so many of them out there. Like, what are you doing? Why are you trying? Mm -hmm. And as much as you can, it's not easy. Follow your dreams if you can do it. Go for it. Yeah. It'll give you a lot more satisfaction and purpose in life than just being a mindless sloth, than going nowhere. So is that what you think is being pretty Yes, because I like I like the fact about you know there's so many issues with like body shaming for women especially it still goes on you know and I think it's so insane you know you got to be like stuck in this label and I've seen like you know just reading you know on the internet like people with models of you know full figured where she's breastfeeding where she's not a size four how dare she wear a bikini if she has stretch marks like it's so crazy to me that people have to be subjected to that craziness and you know don't. If it makes you happy, then do it. Yeah. You know, because what? Because some idiot has a problem with a breastfeeding mom in public, or you're 45 and you wear this outfit. Who cares? Like, yeah. so many people like they want to define you, define you, define. It's narrow thinking. And if you, and if I thought narrow, I wouldn't even be here today. I'd be yeah. the same, same repetitive job, and one day wake up and say, "What happened to my life?" Yeah. 
I did nothing. I accomplished nothing but being basically anonymous. Yeah. Why go through life like that? You got a feeling, you got a, you got an intuitiveness about something, go ahead and do it.